I'm racers Marshall Pruitt. Qualifying for the GMR Grand Prix, the Indianapolis Road Course is done. I can tell you two things in our video series here presented to you by Vintage Motorsport Magazine. Please pay a visit, please subscribe. Two things are done. It's 526, end of a very long day, one of the busiest days IndyCar has all year long, with just sessions and sessions and going. So that part's over. The other thing that's over, a dreadful period for Ray Hall, Edmund Lanigan racing, their last pole position three years ago. Who do we have on pole? Christian Lungard. Uh, just wrote in a piece this week on racer.com that thank goodness for RLL. Congratulations, Mike. Mike Lanigan there, someone who has invested a lot into this team for a long time. One of the unsung heroes among team owners, truly. This is a team that has been rising with Christian in particular, but not necessarily his teammates. Knowing that I mentioned it's a good thing Christian is under contract to RLL for next year at least, if not longer, because if he was a free agent, everybody would be trying to sign him. I'm aware of one team, major team, that inquired if he was available, politely understood that he was not, but no big surprise that he is the first RLL driver to grab a pole in quite some time. That number 45 high V Honda, full lying. So happy for this kid. Broke through here a couple years ago, the second Indy GP round here in 2021. Put this thing in the fast six. Here he is capitalizing on that. So super happy for him, but I'd say I'm even happier for Jack Harvey. Someone whose long standing presence within the team has not felt like it was guaranteed. Uh, let's just say that a performance like this can only help confirm that there is something here that works not only with him, but with RLL. Another big thing to think about here with Jack too, we know that this is a place he's been good at. Really his first breakout performance in IndyCar was here with his former team, Meyer Shank Racing. Great for him, great momentum for RLL going into the Indy 500, Graham Rahal didn't quite make it through to the fast 12, but nonetheless came close. As he mentioned, he was really dissatisfied, and that's the kind of thing you want, coming close but not being quite there. Good on him knowing that the RLL team had something very special today. Can they convert that into a win tomorrow? We'll find out. Who do we have starting second? A pole sitter already this year, Errol McLaren's Felix Rosenquist. After Felix Rosenquist, who do we have? Our man Alex Polo from Chip Ganassi Racing, who's going to join us in a minute, tell us about his session, came so close. But you look at this fast six, it's a lot of really strong teams there. Mung and Dreddy Autosport, bit of a surprise. Colton Herta not there, had a struggle in first practice session, had some issues with the motor, which they had to get rectified, really lost pretty much the entire session. That set him back, so not crazy surprise the defending race winner didn't have a great qualifying. He's going to be starting 14th, I believe, but that's where we won from last year, if I remember correctly. But Romain Grosjean already two poles this year. He was saying words that you would not say at church on Sunday. He was mad. Definitely had a bad qualifying there, but there was one savior within the Andretti group, that being our guy, Kyle Kirkwood, P6 for him. So an interesting fast six. Aero McLaren represented, Andretti represented, Ray Hall, Edmund Lanigan represented a couple times, Ganassi, as we mentioned, and so on. So some interesting stories there. Things get a little bit bumpy. You look at the back of the field, there are five teams that collectively had all of their drivers locking out P17 through P27 and last. It's rare when you get an entire cluster of, I think they're all two car teams, kind of a Noah's Ark, more or less, of them doing that. There's only one interloper in there, and that was Grosjean in P18. So definitely a big story of the haves and the have-nots today at the GMR Grand Prix in qualifying. If you think about the problems that Elio Castro Neves had in the second practice session, losing a motor, they had to do a change there and scrambled. Good on the Meyershank racing team to get that done, get him out here for qualifying. Wasn't able to set a great time because he lost that entire session, but nonetheless, you see folks trying hard to recover. Strange to see these two Honda motor issues. Who's on pole? Not a Chevy, a Honda. So there's still speed and capabilities there. Think about the Team Penske organization. 
We would have thought they would have been there, thereabouts. Not really. Scott McLaughlin not having the day. Joseph Newgard not having the day. Will Power not having the day. So without a doubt, we are going to have some quality drivers outside the top six, eight, ten, you name it, having to fight their way forward. So that should be the story of Saturday. If you haven't, check out Mike Hole's Stints and Stops video talking about what he thinks, how many stops we're going to have, the general durations and such. There's a lot going on there. Last item to mention for you here. Got wind to something yesterday. It's by no means a done deal. I'm going to keep a lot of this to myself for now, but could there be a driver change among the 34 cars that are entered for the Indy 500? There could. Spoke with the team, said, it's not there, please hold. Rang, who I've heard is the replacement driver, sent me to voicemail almost right away, which is kind of a nod to what you do is you answer the call and you just lie. What you don't do is send the person straight to voicemail because it's kind of the tip off that you know why I'm calling and anyways, but I'm hoping there's nothing here. I'm hoping there are no changes and everything is stable and great. And the 34 on the entry list remain the 34, but there is the potential for one driver change prior to the start of practice next Tuesday. We'll see if that driver being asked to be ready, if they need to stand in, does indeed need to do so. We're done with the craziest day, almost of the month, maybe qualifying for the 500. That gets a little bit wacky, but a long day is done. Thanks for tuning in. If you can, once again, check out vintagemotorsport.com. Might be something you love reading. I may have written something in the most recent issue. So that might be a disqualifier right there. We'll be back to you tomorrow. Who knows who we'll be speaking with, but appreciate you tuning in. Sorry, you my dad. I was, I was doing the debrief with my dad. I, so it's an important debrief. Very, always. very. Who do we have? We have an IndyCar champion here by the name of Alex Palo. Hey, you were really quick in qualifying. Coming into this fast six final round, you had put down a crazy lap. I'm like, is he going to hold on to P1? Didn't quite hold on to P1. You're going to start P3 in that number 10 Chip Ganassi racing entry. The crazy thing, though, Alex, tell us about looking at starting third. How disappointed can you be, though, knowing the only thing separating you from Pulsar to Christian Lundgaard? Four hundredths of a yeah. second. That is stupid. It is, it's stupid, but it's IndyCar and it's IndyCar here at IMS. Um, honestly, I'm not disappointed. I'm yeah. super happy to be starting on the second row. Um, we have plenty of chances to try and fight for the win. Um, but obviously, when you, it's so close, you're like, oh, why yeah. I didn't break just, you know, yeah. that little bit later. Um, but yeah, anyway, kudos to them. They did a great job. Um, my car has been amazing since the start uh, of practice one. So hopefully it's going to be even better tomorrow. We haven't had a hello breakout weekend yet. I know there's only round five, so yeah. it's not like we've had a ton of them, but we haven't had one of those. Man, he was there the whole time. Give me a feeling. Where are you at with the season so far? Are you feeling like this weekend might be part of that? Breakout? Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think our season, it's been good so far. We're 13 points, I think. Um, but we haven't had like a clean weekend. Yeah. Uh, Sampit, we struggled. Texas was weird because it was my best race of the year, expecting to be the worst. Um, Long Beach was great, but we had an incident, blah, blah, blah. Barber wasn't great. So we're always there, which is important. Um, when it's going to be our weekend, I don't know, hopefully month of May. Um, but I'm not anxious about that. I think. If we keep on being there, uh, one day it's going to come, hopefully not too late. Um, but yeah, I feel, I'm feeling really confident. I think it's our best start so far um, since I've been with the team. So. Tell me about seeing Christian Lundgaard, right? Fellow young driver like yourself, crazy talented, getting his first pole. You know what that feels like. He's now getting to feel that for the first time. And also, the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan team, Yeah. Eh, hard times. They had a great qualifying as well. Jack Harvey up there too. I know you're here to represent your team and sponsors, but is there anything inside you that's like, 
I know what that feels like. That's cool. Good for them. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's cool to get uh, new pole sitters. Uh, I only got one pole, so I just won more. Um, but honestly, it's cool. I think they've been uh, struggling this year, so it's great to see them that they get compensated. Hopefully tomorrow it's not their day and it's our day. Um, but honestly, they've always been really good here, yeah. especially Christian when uh, was it 21 when he just did a one-off race and he's qualified fourth. Yeah. So um, there's something about this place that fits their car and his style. So yeah. I can't wait for these 85 laps tomorrow. So let's close on this as we always want to do. My wife being a veteran, you obviously supporting the American Legion, their Be The One campaign. Tell me about seeing military veterans in your pit box, even when you pull in. Like, I was here for free practice one, and I'm like, it was too loud, and I couldn't exactly ask him, but I'm like, I know that he served this country yeah, somewhere he did. and did amazing things. So you always, you have, you're not just promoting, you have the real yeah. heroes here supporting you. What's it like pulling into your pit box and going, wow. Oh yeah, and he's been, he's been uh, here all weekend. He was here last, week, uh, last year as well. And after practice one that we were P2, he was like, good, but we need a little bit more, you know? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I like that kind. Yeah. And when we were P1 in practice two, he was like, okay. Good job. So yeah, it's it's great to represent the American Legion. I think since last year that uh, we kicked off the Be The One campaign, yeah. it's been um, an absolute honor to, to represent that, uh, to see so many veterans, to help save lives. Um, and hopefully this just continues to go up and up and we can help more people. Be the one.org. Uh, this isn't a, a hard promo. This no. is just because we love what this is about, trying to keep all of our veterans with us, avoid suicide, yep. which we know is too much a part of that story. So be the one.org. This guy is trying to bring all the smiles and love possible. Come join in and follow him. And if he can ruin Christian Lungard's weekend, he will. A little bit selfish there, Flo. I'll try, I'll but try. But even if he doesn't, a podium would be yet another great finish sure. for you. So we'll see what we have tomorrow.